Good morning, everybody. You may be seated. My name is Keith Evans, and I get to serve your site pastors and get to mentor and encourage them. And I've been asked to give you a, a, just a brief devotional thought this morning. How are we doing this morning? I'm so awake after a great, long, but great day yesterday. It's great to be together again, isn't it? I was reading in the news last week, and I read this article. It said, Italian police have discovered the mummified remains of a 70-year-old woman sitting at a table more than two years after she died. Her name was Marinella Beretta. She had no living relatives. She was found in her house in Pristino near Lake Como in northern Italy. When I read that, I thought, how lonely. I thought, that's the opposite of what God intends. It's the opposite of what he intends for his church. She died alone at her own kitchen table and sat there for two and a half years before anyone found her. God has a better plan than that. It's called his church. That shouldn't be a part of his church. Though I have to admit that through the years I have preached to a few folks that looked a little mummified. Bless me if you can, preacher. (laughs) But that's not how it should be, is it? The Lord has better. The truth is, His church is alive. It's been alive for 2,000 years, and the Lord will continue to grow his church and we get to be part of it. We get to be part of it. In in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19 through 19 through 22, Peter's talking about what the church looks like. He says we're, we're like a household. We're built together, we're built on the foundation of the of the prophets and most importantly the chief cornerstone who is Jesus Christ. Then he gets to verse 22 and, and that's just what I want to look just this one verse and in, in these these thoughts here. It says as And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. It's it's kind of amazing. He says you're being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives. There's something supernatural that happens when we do life together. But what caught my attention was the first part. It says, and in him you too are being built together. He was writing this to the believers in the city of Ephesus, he's saying to them, you're being built together, but he also, that is also true for you, for me. You're being built together. God, the Lord doesn't waste a thing. And what he's doing in you now, at this time in your life, he's doing it in preparation for what he will do in the years to come. So I have one challenge, just one thought in, in this little devotional time. And that is, I want to challenge you to, to not just consider yourself disciple makers in college, as it, and please do consider yourselves disciple makers in college, but I want you to begin to consider yourself lifetime disciple makers, lifetime church people, that you're going to be part of his church for the rest of your life. I know you know this, but you're going to be out of college a whole lot longer than you're in college. Do you know that? may not feel like it when you're about midway through. But Beverly and I realized that in just a couple of years, we will have been out of college 10 times longer than we were in. It took me 10 years, too. <laughs> not really. I'd be like 120 or something, wouldn't I? Uh, it's hard to believe. And so what that means is that what God is doing in your four years or five or six, whatever it is, It's preparing you for the next 40 or 50 or 60. That's pretty exciting. He's preparing you to be his church, and you already are. After pastoring for many years, I I just have this opinion. I don't have a biblical proof. I just believe there are these folks that are deep in God's heart. And I'm not talking about the pastors. It's important and what an honor it is to serve in that role, but it's just the people that love Jesus, and because they love Jesus, they love his church. They just serve. And when I think about that, I I, I know that the church wouldn't exist and wouldn't survive without these kind of people. 
people like a, a lady named Shirley who can, she can whip up food for a large group of people like it's nothing. I'm like, Shirley, how do you do that? Ah, no big deal. Or her husband, who's so quiet and still leads a men's Bible study, but can fix anything that anybody needs fixed. That's the church. Or I think about Susan and her husband, Bob. Susan uh, will share the gospel with anyone who will listen and with some people who don't want to listen. And her husband, Bob, is a, he's wise and he's discerning and he serves as an elder. That, that's the church. I, I think of folks from Mississippi here doing child care for parents so they can be here in this conference, come all the way at their expense to do that. That's the church. I think of a, a guy named Max when I was pastoring early on in Monmouth, Oregon. I, he just served people. I remember one Sunday morning, he called me about four in the morning and he said one of the ladies in our church had uh, slid off, the, it was icy, slid off into the ditch and she needed help. She was cold and so we went out and we picked her up and we took her to her home. That's the church. That's also the same morning that I fell asleep during the music right before I was supposed to get up to preach. Uh, not my best sermon probably, but that's the church. And listen, the Lord, for some of you, the Lord is going to call you to be pastors. He's going to call some of you to, to serve all around the world, to reach the nations. But so many of you, he's calling you to a career. He's calling you to a field. He's calling you to the tech world, to, to engineering world, to medical world, whatever, construction, whatever. And that's your mission field. But as he calls you there, you're his church. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, the church is like a body and we're, we're all different. Some of you are eyes and you have vision and some of you are noses and you, you can discern and sniff out you know, things that are wrong. Some of you are ears and you're a good listener. Some of you are knees and you are prayers. Some of you are livers and spleens because Paul said that unseen parts are just as important. You're the church. You're not just going to be the church of the next generation. You are. So would you consider yourself already a lifetime disciple maker, a lifetime church person, one who is being built? Don't, don't be like uh, don't be like Marinella Beretta in Italy. Don't go it alone. Be its church. And as you do, you have so much to look forward to. Can I pray for you? Lord, I thank you for yesterday. Man, you met with us. And you're meeting with us now. You are here. You're here because you indwell us as followers of Jesus. You indwell us with your spirit. And you're also somehow in this amazing way, you are with us because we're together. Lord, I pray for every person for receptive hearts in this moment, but for the rest of their lives. And Lord, would you surprise each of them and how you use them and how you've gifted them and you've gifted them to be part of your church. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do in the years to come through this, these folks and how as you work through them, their influence will multiply and the world will be impacted. We pray that that would be so. We pray it be so in Jesus' name.